Hey folks, Scott here. Today's video is a bit of a special video as we're going to be taking an in-depth look at Acoustica's Mixcraft 8 Pro Studio. This video will be longer than my usual uploads and very in-depth, so please check the video description to jump around to whatever parts you want to see. If you've seen my Cakewalk doll reviews, then you know what you're in for. I've recorded and mixed one of my songs completely within Mixcraft using a number of their stock plugins plus a few third-party ones, and I'll be sharing with you my results and thoughts about Mixcraft 8 at the end of the video. A big thank you to the guys at Acoustica who provided me with this copy of Mixcraft 8 Pro Studio to create content for you. They've been super nice and accommodating, so that is awesome. Also, instead of just plopping my logo up here for two minutes while the demo plays, I clipped together a handful of Quake Champions gameplay while you guys listened to what I came up with. I figured that'd be probably a bit more interesting to watch as you listen to the song that I created. So let's just go ahead and get started with the demo and start looking at the DAW. Looking at the website, the first official version of Mixcraft came out in 2004. It's pretty neat, actually, because you can go right to their site and actually still download the very first version. Now, I've already done that, and that's what you're looking at right now. This is actually Mixcraft 1.0 Build 8, released April 16th, 2004. Pretty cool, huh? I think I was just about to finish high school in 2004. Actually, really, I think it was like April 20th or something like that. I already don't remember. I'm I'm that old already. Anyhow, let's fast forward to the present and have a look at what they have to offer now. Mixcraft 8 is billed as, quote, the musician's DAW. This is a pretty high standard because as a musician myself, I know what I would be looking for. Anyway, they have a page here where you can compare versions between Mixcraft 8 Pro Studio and Mixcraft 8 Recording Studio. I'm obviously not going to read through all this, but it's especially worth noting that Melodyne has been natively implemented into the Pro Studio version. Melodyne, as you should know, is a pretty killer program, so this is a very huge deal. Finally, I had a close look at the release notes because I wanted to understand myself why Mixcraft 8 would be a good choice, you know, why someone would want to upgrade from Mixcraft 7, for example, or even why someone would want to pick up Mixcraft in the first place. And in their latest release, they overhauled the audio engine, they've added VST3 support, they also have MP4 support. Uh, yes, you can also edit video with this DAW. Uh, they've spruced up their UI, uh, they've improved automation controls, and they even fixed up their sound library browsing functionality. This means uh, they, they've actually included the ability to search freesound.org directly within the DAW browser. Last but not least, 
in the really small text here, uh, there's one thing I wanted to point out. The ability to mix down to stems with different rendering options. Now, in reading about this, previous versions had a workaround for you to do this, but it was a bit of a pain. So in Mixcraft 8, they thought it through, and you can actually export straight to stems uh, with a various naming pattern that you can set up. Uh, this is very important if you're working with other guys who don't use Mixcraft. So way to think ahead, and that's definitely a great feature in the new Mixcraft 8 version. All right, let's open up Mixcraft 8 Pro Studio and start poking around. When we start the program, uh, we get this nice dialog box. Uh, it's pretty useful. You can specify a number of different settings here, as well as load a template or existing project. Pretty standard, but well thought out in my opinion. Let's just skip this for now so we can look at an empty project. Right away, you may notice that it's rather simple. In fact, this is another model of Acoustica. Software should be easy to use. I can say immediately that I'm not really inundated with, a, with huge taskbars or tons of open tabs or a bunch of different icons. At first look at the top here, everything is pretty obvious. You know, new project, open project, uh, probably add something. Yeah, add a new sound file here. Uh, this is save, obviously. We should probably know that one by now. Uh, this one isn't immediately clear. Uh, publish. Okay, so publish probably straight to SoundCloud, something like that. Oh, burn a CD. Okay, I wonder how long that functionality is going to stay. Uh, mix down to audio file. Cool. Uh, the only thing that I can't guess off the top of my head is the MIDI learn button here. Well, I'm assuming it has something to do with automation controls. I actually have no MIDI keyboards or anything like that, so I, I cannot confirm that. Automation type, snap settings, time, beats. Yeah, pretty simple thus far. So here is the main clip area, standard. We have the docker area, uh, but I believe it's called details in Mixcraft. You open and close it with this icon here, and yeah, you, you actually do have to click this every time. Uh, this is a small feature that I believe could be added, a shortcut to open and close the details area. Not a deal breaker, but it was a bit of a bit of an annoyance for me at times. So here, here we have the project, sound, mixer, and library tabs in the detail area. Uh, all pretty simple to understand. Inside the project tab, we can put all our song information. We have a huge space for project notes. Really helpful if you're collaborating with somebody or if you wanted to jot down some lyrical ideas or some processing or production ideas, something like that. This would be the place to write it. Next is the sound tab. This is for MIDI or audio editing. So if you have a clip and you click on it, it will appear here. Let's just add actually an instrument clip really quick so we can see what I mean. So this is what the sound tab looks like when you've clicked on a MIDI clip, for example. We've got the piano roll. And if you click this arrow right here, it'll open up and show you more specific details about the clip you're editing. Uh, you can rename the clip here in this box. This will re uh, by the way, this will rename the actual clip information that you see here in the, in the main clip grid. The clip name will not change if you just rename the track, so keep that in mind. The Mixer tab, yeah, self-explanatory. Uh, this tab represents all of your tracks in console fatal format. You have a built-in EQ that you can play with. However, if you click this gear icon here, you can specify what you, uh, what you want to show or hide on the strips. This area hides or shows actual tracks as well. Very useful for hiding, for example, submixes or instrument tracks, things that really you just don't want to see. Very cool for keeping things organized and less messy. Finally, we have the library tab, which is where you can add folders from your PC and even search for sound files online via freesound.org. This is a very unique feature and no doubt will be helpful for you guys out there doing like video work or even electronic type music. Let's actually head back to the piano roll for a minute and look at the taskbar quickly. Once again, very simple. Uh, in fact, literally, I don't believe I even needed to open up the manual or anything to see what any of these uh, items were. One excellent thing I wanted to point out is that they have gone through the trouble to set up drum maps and editing parameters where you can specifically point out a specific scale you wish to program MIDI notes for. One thing though, the piano roll itself could be grayed out a bit better. It's not immediately clear which notes go where. I mean, obviously, if you have the different scales and such memorized, well, good for you, bro. <laughs> I don't. But I just, I just mean in general, it could be better visually represented. The performance panel itself is handy for working with various loops. Uh, you click and drag them from the song library, for example, and then construct songs that way. Mixcraft uh, will also automatically adjust the BPM and the key of the loops if you want. 
I really did not use the performance panel for my song. I really can't say much more about it than that. So at this point, you've literally seen just about the entire DAW. There is one last thing, though, I'd like to point out. There is a marker panel. To see the marker panel, go to View and Marker List. It's going to pop up here on the right-hand side. Once again, though, I think that the marker list is important enough to warrant a keyboard shortcut. The constant clicking is a bit extra. That said, though, dedicated marker lists are awesome and much appreciated. All right, let's go ahead and open the song you heard earlier and have a look at what I did. For the sake of this video, I didn't bounce out anything because I wanted to show you exactly what I did. And this is actually good news. It indicates that Mixcraft is capable of working with lots of tracks and effects that are open without bouncing them out. So if you have a decent computer, Mixcraft can handle it. I have a couple instances of Contact 5 running, one for the drums, uh, one for bass, and for the orchestral instruments. I've created submix tracks for each group of instruments as well to keep things organized. You can see here I've got my usual color code going on, you know, green for drums, blue for bass, yellow for guitars, orange for leads. And the orchestra, I just decided to use purple. Uh, if we enable the master track here, I changed it to red and renamed it to master as well. Opening the details area, uh, specifically the mixer tab, I made use of hiding instruments, tracks, and panels that I didn't want to see. Oh, one other thing is I did disable clip buttons. I just didn't have a need for them and didn't want to see them. You can do that by right-clicking on a clip and choosing the setting right here. All right, let's open the drums MIDI clip and have a look at the piano roll. You can do that just by double-clicking the clip and it will open automatically. Now, I like to zoom in a bit on everything, and that can be done by holding down Control shift and scrolling the mouse wheel. I actually changed the settings on how to do this, so I'll talk about that a little bit later. Anyway, Mixcraft's piano roll functions like any other piano roll, but one feature I really enjoyed was the ability to edit velocities within a certain parameter range. For example, I would highlight all the kick drum hits, for example, and then uh, just click on the MIDI editing function here, uh, Humanize, and you can see here the Randomize in Range function. This is actually very awesome and made initial drum humanization incredibly easy. Now as for drum processing, well, I have to be honest and say the drum library itself I used pretty much eliminated any heavy lifting. There will be a separate video on that, uh, but just so you know, I'm using Robin Lejean's drums and cymbals. They are called the Sparrowhawk and the Phoenix respectively. That said, I opted to try out using mostly stock EQ plugins and just where I saw a moment I messed around with the stock plugins. I was able to get what I needed from them. Now Mixcraft has opted to use more graphic EQ styles instead of parametric. They do the job reasonably well and there's even a small one and a large 31 band EQ that you can use. As you can see, just you know, really dipping out mids in the kick, nothing special at all. For the snare, I also went ahead and used the Pro Studio Reverb Suite. It's actually quite nice. It was very easy to dial in a nice plate for the snare and the toms. Overheads, I have to admit, I just went with my regular plugins because I know how to use them and I knew what I wanted to get. However, uh, I'm sure the 31 band EQ would have worked just as well, would have done just fine. Bass has the EQ plugin acting as a gain reducer. There is no dedicated uh, gain staging plugin or anything like that. There's an REQ doing the heavy lifting and the L1. By the way, you guys can get a really great L1 limiter clone called the W1 limiter. It's literally an exact clone. It's perfect. I will link the download to that in the description so you can check that out. There's nothing special whatsoever happening here. I'm just using Panda Bass with their built-in overdrive pedal. That's it. Guitars are interesting. I tracked this in standard E and spent quite a while working on the tone uh, itself. I'll have a separate video detailing exactly what I did here. As you'll notice, I've done very little processing to the guitars, and actually this entire session, actually. I have EQ to reduce output gain, just some filtering options. <laughs> That's literally it, no joke. Uh, I guess it pays to really get a nice tone at the source, huh? Lead guitars are the same. I just manipulated the tone stack to have more mids and bass, otherwise same processing. I used the AC delay plugin here. Uh, it turned out to be quite nice. My favorite plugin is the Sonatus Delay that's bundled with Cakewalk, but I didn't have any issues with the AC delay and quickly found something that suited me. Orchestral instruments are basically not being processed a lot, just taking out some mids, making them a bit brighter, using L1 to bring the levels up. All this gets bussed to the Pro Studio Reverb Suite again. Didn't really change the settings here, just kind of picked a medium setting and went with it. And now we're to the master track. And I bet you guys think there's some special hardcore magic, right? 
No, I just have three plugins. Uh, this is the Dust Analyzer. It's a great free spectrum analyzer that I like to use. Then I have Wave's uh, Linear Phase Multipan and L2. Voila. So I know that was a pretty quick rundown of what I did uh, mixing-wise for this session. I will have some videos coming up in the future uh, dealing with more specific things that I did, like the contact routing, how I use the submixes, and things like that. So look for that in the future. Moving on, I'd like to specifically state a few things that I find Mixcraft does well. I think that you guys might find important. First of all, it has automatic routing with virtual instruments. This is a huge plus. This will save you tons of time from having to manually route virtual instruments like Contact 5. Simply load it up and you're ready. Next is the MIDI editing. I found MIDI editing to be fast and intuitive. Uh, it could be that I have a lot of experience anyway working within piano rolls, but I didn't have any special problems working inside the piano roll of Mixcraft. Also, as I already mentioned, the humanization functionality contains the ability to humanize within a particular velocity range. That's a huge plus for me. Third, the interface is clean, uncluttered, and everything is easy to find. Fourth, automation is pretty easy to do. Fifth, the meters are simple and easy to understand. Sixth, integrated functionality of Melodyne. This is a great tool to use. Even though I didn't use it with this session, uh, you could fix minor pitch issues or even use it for audio quantizing. It's an amazing product and it's a huge plus to have it natively integrated into the program itself. Finally, and just a little one, there's actually a guitar tuner built into every audio track. That's pretty neat. On the whole, I do think Mixcraft is a great product. Uh, there are just a few things that I think Mixcraft could either implement or use some help with. These points, of course, are just my opinion, so take it with a grain of salt. First and foremost would have to be the lack of what I would consider necessary keyboard shortcuts. There are no keyboard shortcuts to open or close the details area, so having to click that tiny symbol every time slows everything down. It'd also be cool to have a keyboard shortcut for the markers list, I already mentioned that. And finally, it would be cool to have keyboard shortcuts for things like inserting submix tracks, audio tracks, and instrument clips. This would greatly speed up workflow. Next, the colors. Now, I do like the color gray, but I think tracks could retain their color all the time instead of only when you click them and only when they're active. Next, on the main clip grid, uh, you'll see the timeline mode. You can change it to beats and measures or minutes and seconds, and that's actually what I mean. The timeline mode is either beats and measures or minutes and seconds. You can't combine them. Fourth, uh, grid lines can't appear on top of the clips in the main clip grid. This would make audio editing, you know, things like that more difficult than it needs to be. I think if the grid, lids were, grid lines were above the clip, you could easily audio edit and do things a bit faster. Next, there's no gain staging plugin. Now, the workaround that I used was just throw the AC EQ and adjust the output gain that way. But I think a dedicated, you know, uh, like gain staging plugin or like a trim plugin like Pro Tools or something like that, I think that would be a positive addition to Mixcraft. Finally, overall, I felt the DAW to be what I would call click heavy, meaning that with the absence of keyboard shortcuts and such like that, you'll be fine. You'll find yourself doing a lot of work with the mouse instead of just working around with the keyboard. Moving on to stability of the program, I do have a decent computer. It's pretty beefy. I have an AMD Ryzen 7 uh, 1700X, six, uh, 16 gigabytes RAM, uh, SSD. So I, I would consider that I have a rather powerful PC. Uh, but I did have a number of crashes, and each crash happened for different reasons, so I can't really put my finger on it. One time it crashed while the song was playing, and I was muting and unmuting my guitar tracks. Another time it crashed while I was actually in the middle of tracking rhythm guitars, and it even crashed one time while I was saving the project. I can't say that this session is very large or has a large number of plugins, so I can't even begin to speculate why these crashes happened. It could very well be that I have a configuration or just something weird happened or I was just unlucky. So I would not say that Mixcraft is unstable at all. So this is just my experience of working with this particular session. Maybe you will have no crashes at all, and that's completely possible. You may have noticed that I have made tweaks to Mixcraft when you were looking at my session. I thought that I would actually talk about this. So before recording this track, I drove straight into the Preferences tab to have a look at what I could customize. I was both surprised and pleased to see the simplicity isn't only in terms of the interface. The few options that can be tweaked are sensible and were pretty much what I was looking to tweak anyway. So the following tweaks I made were, uh, first, I removed note text in the piano roll so it doesn't show the note. I also removed note color changes in the piano roll when the 
uh, notes are being played. I changed the default audio and instrument track colors. That's really not a big deal. It's just me being me. Uh, I also changed the playback cursor to always be centered. I made it so the playback cursor goes back to the start position when stopping play. This is a huge must, especially when you're recording guitars. Uh, I also changed mouse wheel and keyboard combinations for zooming. I basically changed them to how I've been working forever. Uh, really cool that you could actually uh, make those changes in Mixcraft. That's a huge plus. I removed the FX bin from the tracks in the main clip grid. Now, I, like I mentioned before, I do this because I want as much room as possible when I'm uh, tracking. However, having to click that button for the details area, I, going back, I would probably leave the FX there so that I could manipulate everything faster. And finally, I removed the EQ knobs uh, from the channels in the channel strip. I didn't really think I would need them, wasn't too interested to work with them, so I removed them. Obviously, these are all personal preference, so you can do whatever you want, so feel free. Finally, what is my overall impression? Mixcraft 8 Pro Studio is legit, especially for a sub $200 price tag not to mention the natively integrated Melodyne feature. The program loads and works fast. It's easy to get the hang of. And the overall design, I mean, isn't blowing my socks off. I think Acoustica could probably consider revamping the design, make it a bit more modern looking. You know, but that said, menus, options, you know, all that stuff is logically placed. I had no problems finding anything. So in terms of functionality and working within the DAW, I would probably say it's not that huge a deal that it looks a bit outdated. Anyway, once again, I'd really like to say thank you to the guys at Acoustica for providing this review copy of their DAW. It was a pleasure to have a look and record in something new and to do this video. For all of you out there looking for a very affordable music recording option that just can get the job done and has a nice bundle of features and plugins and, as I already mentioned, Melodyne, Mixcraft 8 Pro Studio might just be what you're looking for. So if you're using Mixcraft, what did you think about it? Have you tried it? Uh, please let me know in the comments and feel free to give video ideas. I'm very curious uh, about people who are using Mixcraft, what problems or maybe uh, ideas or solutions that they have, because I will continue to do content for this DAW. I already have several videos in the works, but you might have an idea for me. Anyway, that does it for this one. Finally, <laughs> thanks for being patient. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video, all right? Have a good one.